You're watching the Flying Dutchman podcast. Damn! This is the Red Skies of Montana movie. And this is uh, loosely based on the Man Gulch fire of August 1949, where 13 smoke jumpers lost their lives when there was a dramatic uh, shift in the wind. And here, this is the visitor center, and it's a great place to visit. It has um, interactive, you get to see smoke jumpers doing their daily routine. It has uh, just kind of unassuming, there's dormitories. Uh, just unassuming buildings. Um, the make sure you call ahead, go to their website to find out the hours because they do have specific hours for the tour. There's one of the dormitories. Everybody was great. The tour guide was wonderful. They have a great gift shop, and they have a actual cabin or lookout tower. That um, ooh, that's spooky. And this is what it looks like. And this is. Uh, the provisions which you would find in a smoke lookout uh, tower of the 1930s, early 40s, wood stove. Uh, it's very well outfitted, very accurate, and they have um, a lot of things on display. And this is, uh, they're very proud of their visitor center and it shows in the interactions that you have and there's any question you have can be answered. And down the road, I mentioned the uh, Man Gulch fire. Down the road, and on one of my other episodes about mountain flying, you actually see the DC-3 that the smoke jumpers had jumped from that perished in the Man Gulch fire. And here's a clean shot of that cabin. And then we're going to take a, a tour going the other way. With the great, oh, there's some of the gift shop behind the window. And um, everything in here is authentic. Everything came from an actual watchtower and that includes the windows and the furnishings and stuff in this look there's the internet of 1930s and uh click a monitor i'm joking of course a lot of dishes they're up there for extended period of time as a watch person and there's their azimuth board where they would shoot an azimuth where the smoke is at and relay that information and the smokers would be deployed this is a smoke jumper uniform with face protection uh, they carry uh, several shoots um, and there's a lot of photographs historical photographs of them in action and they have uh, a demanding workout regiment that they have to maintain Whoop. So anyway, we are going to listen to the tour guide as she discusses the role of the smoke jumpers. And of course, I like to take pictures of models and the different aircraft that they use. And let's enjoy. Um, this is what a smoke jumper is going to look like when they're about to jump out of their plane. So when a fire call comes in, uh, our jumpers are going to have anywhere between five to seven minutes to get fully suited in this outfit right here. And as they're doing that, they're going to have other jumpers along the way double checking, making sure everything is strapped in, buckled in correctly, so nothing's going to go wrong. Um, so this mannequin right here has two parachutes. This is going to be their reserve parachute, and the one on the back is their main parachute. So if anything goes wrong with their main chute, this one will deploy. It is uh, fitted with an altimeter, so if the jumper is has hit a certain altitude and their main chute hasn't deployed yet, this one will have that um, And then down here is their personal gear bag. Every jumper is gonna have one of those, and again, it's gonna have all personal gear. So snacks, water, toiletry. Um, we had a jumper here that would like to jump with six frozen burritos in their bag.
personal preference on what color somebody wants their bag or how many pockets they want or basically how big. Um, yeah, so the other thing that they produce in here too will be their harnesses and their duct tape. section or division of the fire uh -huh. for 14 days. Uh -huh. Here, the role of smoke jumper is more initial attack, so we're likely going to get on smaller incidents, and it's just going to be, for the most part, our load of jumpers that are um, conducting that initial attack on the fire in, in efforts of a suppression. There's a lot more variety as a smoke jumper. When you're on a hotshot crew, you're either on a chainsaw or you're on a tool. Uh -huh. Maybe you do a burnout one day, but for the most part, you you get to a large incident, like Troy said, and then you're grinding for two weeks, just you know, digging infinitely. Like what we're seeing there above Stevens going back. Yeah, exactly. That would be a typical incident. And there's three hotshot crews on there right now, uh, at least. But when you're a jumper, you maybe one day you're cutting, the next day you're leading people, the next day you're you know taking a dozer or a sandy equipment or you're talking to the helicopter. It's just it's a lot more variety wow. and it allows you to be more independent as a firefighter, which I think is the main attraction for a lot of hot shots. Want a little bit more independence instead of just being a tool. So are, are these boxes the type that you drop at a location for the Yep. Chainsaws are in there? Um, I don't think any of these boxes are chainsaws. These are all food boxes. Okay. It's got a little bit of water, food, uh, two hand tools, two glass per box, uh -huh. three sleeping bags. Yeah, each box is designed. 
designed for um, a pair of sweat members. Oh, I see. It's like three or four days worth. Yeah. And how long have you been doing the job? Um, one year. And how long have you been doing First year, yeah, we did rookie training together. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Were you the guy somewhere in the tree? In the tree? <laughs> I don't know. There was, a, there was a practice job where a member of the public called 